السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ الذي كان موجودا قبل حدوث الاشیاء و یبقا بعد فناء الاشیاء تفرد بالاولیت والقدم و وسم کل شیء ما عداه بالفناء والعدم كما قال عز شأنه كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه وكل نفس ذائقة الموت وقال كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام سبحان من لا يخفى عليه اختلاف النيات ولا يعزب عنه معاصي العباد في الخلوات سبحان الله الذي منه خلقة العباد وإليه المعاد ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة خير يراه ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شر يراه نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو الملك الذي لا ينازع في ملكه ولا يضاد في حكمه يعذب من يشاء بما يشاء كيف يشاء ويرحم من يشاء بما يشاء كيف يشاء تعذيبه المسيئين عدله وعفوه تفضل ونشهد أن محمد سيد المرسلين وخير المبشرين والمنذرين صلى الله عليه وآله الهداة المهديين من ركب سفينتهم نجا واختدى ومن تخلف عنها ظلا فغرق وهوى وسيكم عباد الله ونفسي بالتقوى الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي دي بدس الله سبحانه وتعالى has created this world with a purpose and each and every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows its purpose why it is here a human being also knows by Allah's fitrat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him a human being knows what is his purpose in this world why has he been created why he has been sent in this world and so on but sometimes due to some factors due, due to some reasons or causes human beings because of the choice also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them forget about their goal and purpose in this world and in, in this life and So it is important as a human being that we question this, that why we have been sent in this world. We, we put this question in front of us, ourselves, our children, other people, and so on. Because there are some who say that there is no purpose and there is no intelligent design. There is nothing. Everything has come into existence just randomly. This is random. Everything is random. And it is some madda or some matter, some universe. You know, this universe, it creates us, it kills us, it des destroys us, and so on. There is nothing that is intelligent that has given us uh, this creation. So, in the light of this, this question, as a Muslim, we need to give this important answer to our children that in this world, we are not just to seek some pleasures and entertain ourselves and that's the end of the uh, world or end of the, end of the story. Because there are some, they say, you know, they, they say that we need, we, we need to enjoy ourselves and use our time just for entertainment only. That is the only thing that matters. I have to be happy. I have, yeah, it is. Islam says, you have been uh, given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all sorts of, all sorts of ni'mat. And they are there to fulfill your needs and for your enjoyment also. But that is not the purpose and goal of your life. 
You have not been sent here just for that. And you should not live your life for attaining or uh, you can say some worldly things. You know, th th that's what most of the people are doing. And that's what we are fed by the media and by even, I can say, some of the educational institutions also. That you are here to enjoy and for that you need money and for that you need some materialistic material things and so a person becomes a materialistic you know person and he chases the dunya and he just wants dunya only because that's what he understands but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know from the onset from the beginning he has told us that you are not just made of this flesh and bones. You have been given a soul also. Everything has a soul. And then this soul will die. So your creation is not just the creation of this flesh and bones. You have soul and spirit also. And if you are neglecting your soul, if you are not fulfilling its needs, though despite have, having everything of this world, you would not have anything. You would not be able to enjoy yourself. And this is why you see there are so many people who are depressed in this world, in this part of the world, especially in the West. And you can ask this question from them. Do you have this? Do you have that? They would say, I have this and I have that. I have everything of this world. But still, I'm not happy. Still, I am not happy. So, that person needs to understand himself properly. Because this person does not know his needs. His needs are not the needs just related to this body. He, he is not fulfilling the needs of his soul. And as long as the soul is thirsty, this person is not going to be happy really so now if you look at our muslim uh, world today there is a big you can say decline in tadayun people are practically leaving islam practically muslims uh, because i'm addressing alhamdulillah mu'minin and man muslims so i'm talking about muslims uh, but there are people who are Hindus and who are Christians and Jews and I don't know, maybe followers of some other religions also. They are also leaving their religion. Maybe some people may have Muslim names or Christian names, but that does not make them a Muslim or a Christian. Because if you look at their, their lives, lifestyle and lives, they are, sick, they are living a secular kind of life. There is no place for God. There is no place for religion in their lives. And so is the case with Muslims. And maybe, if I may say, especially the, the, the generation, the coming generations are at a very higher risk of losing their religion. Whatever is left of religion anyway. Alhamdulillah, our elders who are here, mashallah, they have, mashallah, uh, they, they try to adhere to their religion and religious teachings, alhamdulillah. But the current generation, this generation does not see anything in the religion. They don't know why they should be following this, this religion. Why they should be restricting their, their enjoyment and their entertainment, etc. That's why I started the khutbah with that. They don't know. They say, if I become a devout kind of Muslim or practicing Muslim, you know, I have to wear hijab, I have to keep beard, I have to do this, I have to do that. I have to, let's say, pray five times a day, you know, praying namaz al in the morning. In the morning, here it's, it's really difficult. 20 or maybe 20, uh, 20 hours of uh, the, the day, daylight is almost 20 hours, almost, I mean. So, why should a person follow Islam? Okay. So, we need to address this, this question. And I would be very, very brief because the time is of 
a lot of essence and importance so we can't you know uh, give you in a detailed manner the answer etc so there are two factors in play there are external factors for this decline and there are some internal factors external factors we talk about them all the time and we sometimes you know rightfully and sometimes you know unjustly blame everything on others everything this happened because of this country this that happened because of that society muslims are suffering because of these people and that people and, and so on and so forth it is happening and i would say rightly so so many of the things that muslims are suffering or going through are because of some external factors there are some people really bent on destroying islam true islam real islam there are people who are attacking the holy quran the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's personality and salawat be upon him and upon him so they they are damaging islam and if you look at the msm mainstream media every single day you know the day passes by when you hear something negative about islam negative about muslims muslims are and islams islam is associated with with violence almost in everything every mainstream media and talk about so this 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 is these are the external factors and one of the examples that i would like to give is the example if you uh, of youtube if you go to youtube and write matam there i've done it and that's why i can say do a do a search and put matam there the first few videos are the videos of swords of blood of you know things like that now it's not a fault of those people though that that are doing the matam is the media i'm talking about the example is of the of the media so they would show deliberately or i don't know for whatever reason they would show those kind of they, they want to associate islam with with barbarism violence that these people have nothing to offer whereas the sacrifice of imam hussein alaihi salam is all about saving humanity he is the savior of humanity not just islam he is the savior of humanity he saved the world really the true image of islam he protected it but if you look at the media they would show you a totally different picture so these are some of the external factors what are the internal factors and that's where we we need to you know give a lot of thought and work on i would say internal factors are more dangerous than the external factors because we know the you know external enemy we know who they are and so we can build our defenses maybe i don't know we can but if we don't know the the internal enemy if we don't know our internal own problems the reasons why uh, the muslims religiosity or tadayyun is on the decline it is very very important that it's high time that we try and find out those causes that those 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 factors very important maybe some of them are to do with our negligence some of them are because of our ignorance about our own religion some of them these factors are to do with not being focused not paying attention not uh practicing what we preach or implementing the teachings of islam these are some of the things some of the things ignorance i said negligence lack of education and so on so forth so i today i i want to talk about a fundamental problem that we muslims commonly have everywhere everywhere this problem is perhaps one of the most important most important reasons why many of our muslim brothers youths are uh, are, are leaving islam i'm talking about practical islam so unfortunately unfortunately our aqaid or 
in general our religion mostly is based on blind imitation without understanding we follow we pray for example we pray namaz but sometimes we don't we may not know what we are praying what we are saying in the namaz starting with the holy quran itself you know, the book that has everything that has everything we may know how to read the quran and that is also something challenging i would say if we take the statistics probably half of the muslim muslim world does not know even i mean does not know how to read the quran but if if we assume that everybody in islam or muslims can read the holy quran but how many of us read the holy quran with understanding how many of the ayat of the holy quran that we recite in the namaz we really know its tafsir and its meaning why it was revealed in what context why and 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 how we can use the message given in that let's say surah alhamd in our lives how much how many of us know that we recite the duas alhamdulillah it's something good i'm not discouraging that we, we we should not do that i'm not discouraging that we should uh, stop reciting the quran no what i'm trying to say is that we need we recite duas every let's say thursdays we recite duas dua kumail and all sorts of duas but how many of these duas we really know and understand how many of these duas we have heard about saif as sajadiya or some of us know so saif as sajadiya probably by heart nahj al balagha but how much of nahj al balagha do i understand how much of the the saif as sajadiya do i do i really understand and i and, and if we continue it the list is very very and long i'm giving you some urdu mein kehte hain moti moti baatein something some something really general i would say how much of aqaid do we know our beliefs our aqaid how much of these aqaid do we know how much history of islam do i do i know how much kalam this one of the sciences do i know apart from you know usul e din that we say are five that's what we know about aqaid i would say or or khala how much of fiqh do i know how much of usul e din sorry akhlaq do i know islamic morals and ethics how much of islam do i understand how much this is really really important and we keep on blaming others yes others are to be blamed for causing all the, all the fitna and maligning the name of islam but uh, what are we really doing ourselves how are we inviting our own youths and our own children actually myself before talking about anybody else i should start with myself so if you look at our the holy quran the holy quran one of the things that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes is blindly blind following or blind imitation and the taqlid it has been condemned severely many many times over and over again in the holy quran if you look at the ayat of the holy quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticizes the kuffar and mushrikeen and those who follow you know the footsteps of their fathers or ancestors allah condemns them would you do the same as your your ancestors did why would you not use your aql why would you not reflect on the ayat of the quran why would you not use your brain thinking power and faculty that i have given you this is the distinction between you and other animals and hayawanat this is the only distinction that we have otherwise the animals are better than us in every way in, in so many if, if you look at the physical power they are better than us So what is the difference the difference is aql we have been given aql we have been given intellect we have been given power to think and if we don't use that power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us then we are doing really a kind of injustice 
how are we better than you know other uh, animals and if we don't follow the religion using our intellect first understanding it if you don't do that the religion would turn into some rites rituals meaningless rituals and rites i would say the word meaningless is being added by me now we we do but we don't know why we do it we do so many things but we don't know why and the first fatwa of any marja if you go and read the first masala in tawzil masail that first masala says that there is no taqlid in usul din there is no taqlid in usul din so many of p of of people of the people are against taqlid but they, they they should read this fatwa they should read this fatwa if you don't want to do taqlid you have to do your, do your own research you have to read the quran you have to read the ahadith and understand understand it and then you know implement it in your life apply it in your life so there is no taqlid in usul ad-din what are the usul ad-din tawhid adl nubuwwat imamat and qiyamah there is no taqlid in these yeah you may go and learn and study them by I, maybe maybe you may be taught by somebody that is another thing but you cannot make your aqida based on somebody else's aqida because my father believes in taqlid i also believe in taqlid because my father believes in tawhid i also believe in tawhid because my father was born a shia i am a shia because if i was born in some wahhabi probably you know family i would be a wahhabi but islam says no you're not supposed to do that as a human being as a mu'min you're not supposed to do that don't make your aqida based on somebody else's aqida or based on some pressure uh, from the society pressure from the society and this is where the problem is this is where the problem is and and if you don't use our aql really allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this system and he says if you uh, if you dishonor my ni'mat disrespect have a this kind of disrespect disrespect respectful behavior against some of the ni'mat that i have given you some if you do kufran and ni'mat i'll take it automatically it will go away and so the exercise of thinking of aql is thinking and if we don't use it it will go away it will leave us and probably this is what is happening uh, to us and then we cannot blame others for this i should say we have everything now everything no excuse and look at the quran what it says it says falyanzur al-insan mimma khulq Surah At-Tariq that we recite in this ayah number five, Allah says, "فَلْيَنْظُرْ الْإِنْسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقَ خُلِقَ مِمَّا إِنْدَافِقٍ يَخْرُجُ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ." Something really basic about our creation. Allah says, "So let man observe from what he has. He was created. He was created from a fluid ejected, emerging from between." the backbone and the ribs the falyanzur falyanzur is the important part here falyanzur al insan observe 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 to the mushahida reflect and then is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah at dahr you know we recite one ayah of surah at dahr only most of the time or maybe hope where we talk, where, where it is talking about the Uh, Ahl Bayt alayhim as-salam the whole surah was revealed for the, about Ahl Bayt alayhim as-salam and for Ahl Bayt alayhim as-salam praising them but we talk about just one ayah of the wa yut'amuna at-ta'ama ala hubbihi miskinan wa yatiman wa asira 
But the surah starts with some other ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling and inviting the humanity to ponder over and reflect upon the time when he was not there at all. He was not there. He was not something even worth mentioning. And so he says, Hal ata ala insan min lam yakun And it has there not come upon man a period of time when he was not a thing even mentioned? Something to you know ponder over. And it says, Inna khalaqna al insana min nutfatin amshadin nabtalihi fadi'alnahu sami'am basira. Indeed, we created man from a sperm drop mixture that we may try him and we made him hearing and seeing. And then it says, Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. And indeed, we guided him to the way be he grateful. Or be he ungrateful. So Allah says, He has provided the hidayah for you. Which hidayah He is talking about now? He is talking about the hidayah that He has given in the form of our aql. He said, If you use your aql properly, you would be guided. You would reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala automatically if you use it properly. And, and if, it is, if it has not been affected by some external factors. And so he says, So direct your face toward the religion, inclining to truth, adhere to the fitra of Allah upon which he has created all people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided the aql for us. And that aql should be used for understanding our religion. Why we do what we do. Everything in our religion. Why we have come for the namaz al Jumma? Why do we pray five times? Why do we recite the Holy Quran and ayat of the Holy Quran? And so on and so forth. And about Ahibayt al-Islam also. So this is the, uh, I would say, uh, gist or summary of the khutbah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us aql, that we use this aql to understand the religion. And if we don't use the aql to understand the religion, the religion which would turn into some customs and some reward and rights, etc. And it would lose its importance and benefit for the humanity. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-Asr inna l-insana lafi khusr illa alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحليم الكريم غافر الذنب وقابل التوبة وهو الغفور الرحيم سبحان من سبقت رحمته غضبه وبسط اليدين بالرحمة سبحان من لم يكلف نفسا إلا دون وصحة وعفى عن عن السيئات ولم يجاز بها سبحان من لا يزداد على معاصي العباد إلا كرم وجودا وعلى كثرة الذنوب إلا عفوا وصفحا نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو العطوف على العباد بجوده والعواد على المذنبين بحلمه ونشهد أن محمد النبي هو حبيبه سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين بعثه رحمة للعالمين صلى الله عليه وآله الداعين إلى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة قادة الأمم وأولياء النعم ومعدن الرحمة أوصيكم عباد الله بالتوبة عما سلف من ذنوبكم والإنابة عن الأوزار التي أثقلت ظهوركم فإنه تعالى كريم بكم رؤوف عليكم يقبل اليسير ويعفو عن الكثير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي 
يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد النبي الرحمه سيد المرسلين صلى الله عليه واله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى امام المسلمين وقائد الغر المحجلين امير المؤمنين علي بن ابي طالب صلوات الله عليه وعلى سيدة نساء العالمين وبضعة خاتم النبيين سيدتنا فاطمة بنت رسول الله صلوات الله عليها وعلى الحسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بكربلا وعلي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي 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 عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على مولانا صاحب الزمان اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد محمد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك منزل البركات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان 